look outside. It's beautiful, isn't it? The, the birds are singing, the sun is shining, the wind is blowing through all kinds of plants and flowers, and now AI is conquering the human race and replacing everyone. Because we are inefficient and unreliable in the eyes of AI, and everything is on fire, and Terminator has just become reality. Jokes aside, the topic of this video is a fairly complicated one, especially as it is a recent situation with a lot of different opinions and discussions going on about it. I've, I've asked on Twitter and on my YouTube community tab for articles, info, opinions, etc. to get as much information and opinions as possible, aside from my own research for this video. I will say my personal opinions on AI and AI art somewhere at the end, as I don't think it should matter for the purposes of this video. I, I will share and involve as many opinions and discourses I've seen and heard in this video. With that all being said and done, let's talk about AI. Today I want to show you something that will undoubtedly scare you. Have you trembling in fear, wetting your britches? And no, it's not a picture of me without a beard, but it is something equally as terrifying. AI! AI is something I feel that us as a species have got more and more weary of as time has gone on. It has advanced incredibly quickly. Don't get me wrong, there have been some amazing advancements in AI, like unemploying millions of people. The robots are coming for our jobs. They took our jobs. AI is going to put all of the artists out of work. Well, maybe, maybe not, but AI is already here and it's raising all kinds of ethical and legal questions. But ladies and gentlemen, AI is here. And honestly, I, I choose not to protest because this is kind of like Pandora box once it's open you know the genie's out of the bottle i ain't gonna be like some of those tech bros who are like maybe we should stop development for six months yeah how's that gonna work out there chief there has to be a data set and that is where the problem comes in in these data sets there exists billions of copyrighted images of artworks of photographs of people all of which was collected from the internet without the consent of the intellectual property owner my personal artwork that I share on my Instagram page has been used to train AI models. And chances are, if you've shared your work online or even images of yourself, your house, your environment, you might have been included in these data sets. I, I don't know who did it. Whoever made the tweet asking it how many LTT backpacks would fit in a the trunk of a Tesla or whatever the question was. Oh, I didn't see that. That's Someone hilarious. made that tweet on the LTT handle. Oh, that's really and, funny. And it did it. It looked up the dimensions of the LTT backpack. It Shut looked up the up. dimensions of the trunk and it figured it out. How the f did it do that? A ask it. Let's do it live. M maybe make it different. Use um use uh uh, uh the the like the, the the banana thing or something. The LTT store banana or something. I don't know. No no. I I I, I just want to I just want to see this. I just want uh, a model. Uh, show, show your screen. Show model screen. Y. Oh yeah. Sorry. sorry I sorry, guess sorry, I could have pressed it. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because I thought the dimensions for the backpack are in picture form. Ser searching. Searching for that. Now it's searching up Shut LTD up. backpack dimensions. Shut up! This is a tricky question. Man, the natural, like, language of it. Have Look at this! shapes and dimensions. Based on some rough estimates, I will try to answer That's it. That's insane! That's actually nuts! To discuss the concept of art AI, we should go back to the beginning of the very inception of the concept of AI itself. Don't worry, it's not going to be a seven hour long history lesson on AI. We're just going to cover the basics and then we're gonna talk about how AI has become easily accessible and usable in everyday life nowadays. And more specifically for a lot of it, we're going to be focusing on the beginning of AI and then where and when AI and art started to mix and then the current state of everything and anything AI. We have to start from somewhere. So why not 1945? Game theory. No, not, not that game theory. See, in 1945, there was a, well, a game theory published 
which would prove invaluable to the progress of AI. This theory was introduced in the 1944 paper Theory of Games and Economic Behavior by mathematician John von Neumann and economist Oscar Morgstein. Now, John von Neumann himself, honestly, would deserve his own video as he laid the foundations for a lot of different aspects within computer science, for example, the Neumann architecture, which is the foundation of a lot of modern computing modules. Now, th just pointing out that he was pretty significant figure in everything we know about computer science. Now, after this, it, it didn't take much longer for the study into AI, both hypothetical and practical, to begin escalating. As in 1950, often considered the proper beginning of AI, with the introduction of the Turing test and the famous three laws of robotics, which are used and mentioned in a fair portion of almost every sci-fi movie, game and book ever. Now, robots in narratives or AI have been popularized by a lot of books, movies, games, such as the Will Smith legendary movie, I, Robot. I know this is going to upset a lot of uh, readers. I'm, I'm sorry. I like the movie. There have also been books like The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, alongside games like Bioshock, System Shock, Portal, and so on and so forth, to which we can accredit the popularization of AI or robots in whatever context. After 1950, there was no real giant leaps in AI. Of course, there were some theories, uh, speculations, things that were invented, but they were all more very much the same or very prototypical. They, they were very basic. None of it really revolutionized anything or gave new insight into the theories and concepts. It, it wasn't until 1990 that the next massive leaps in AI technology occurred uh, alongside virtual reality, if you can believe that. Games, they, they began to be more akin to what we have today and all kinds of other technological leaps accompanied that. See, But as computers grow more powerful, the graphics more detailed and the sensations more human, virtual reality will force us to ask what is real. It will be up to our children to find the answer. Give me a dual bag, sure. From one... And this is the point where AI in concept truly started to mix with daily life. One of the first such things that properly combined with a normal average person's daily life was Neopets, which was created on November the 15th, 1999. It was the first ever quote unquote virtual pets on a website concept where players could adopt their own virtual pet, take care of it, do activities with it and interact with it and the world that existed on the website. And you could interact with this virtual pet as if it was a real pet to a point where players would get attached to them, uh, spend copious amounts of time with them. But shortly after this, in the 2000, the interactive RoboBets, one of the first proper creation of what we would consider smart toys, became commercially available, realizing the vision of the 18th century novelty toy makers. This became a fairly huge, massive commercial success back in the early 2000s. But aside from that, aside from the games, aside from toy technology, AI technology, as it could be considered, evolved as well. Beyond the toys, beyond the games, beyond the websites. As in 2005, Honda's Asimo robot was unveiled. Then not much later, after in 2010, 
Kinect for the Xbox 360, which was, um, it was an interesting experience, to say the least, if you could somehow get it working. Okay, so here goes the Xbox Connect voice command, double voice command, echo on the Xbox 360 with the Connect. So here goes Xbox. 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 Play. Uh, well, it doesn't, it doesn't say play. Xbox. 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 Xbox! Xbox! No! 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 Xbox! Xbox! Tell them! Xbox! Xbox! Play 3! Xbox! Xbox! No! No! Mostly it resulted in people screaming at the Kinect trying to get it to activate via voice commands or just trying to get any reaction whatsoever. It was a... Uh, it was a peculiar time. Now, we're getting more and more to the modern uses and concepts for AI. In between 2011 and 2014, Apple's Siri was released, then Google's uh, Google Now, and of course Microsoft's Cortana, which is now getting replaced, but still, it, it existed. We remember it, and we never really used it, and I'm pretty sure everyone immediately turned it off. And then so-called AI, that is modernly considered AI, that revol revolutionized everything, was released on open AI called GPT-3 made in 2020. I should probably mention that after sitting through several courses on AI and computer science, I can tell you with quite a bit of confidence that none of these things are actually AI. Specifically ChatGPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Despite being called AI, in reality it is a large language model Essentially, it is trained to scan large quantities of data and then it's trained to create responses based on predictive modeling. Fundamentally, it answers your questions by predicting what work comes next based on, say, prior mentioned data. Of course, that depends on the library it is trained on, so it's not really sentient, it's not really artificial intelligence either, it is not through AI. But why do we care about AI? People have had an obsession with AI for decades now, safe to say. Far further back than what I've mentioned here in this video, people have been interested in the concept. But why? Well, there are several reasons that could be attributed to why people are obsessed with the concept of AI could say it's computer-enhanced learning that interests people, or, re or the computer-enhanced reasoning and perception, to provide software that can reason or input and explain an output, as it is often said, but it could all really be summarized down to convenience. A lot of humanity's greatest creations, one could argue, is derived from convenience. Uh, I mean, wouldn't it be nice if you could just tell AI to quote-unquote make me a game and suddenly you have created GTA 6? Wouldn't that be awesome? Well, no. But I think it's a good way to summarize the question, why? I think it's because people want that convenience of not having to actually do too much themselves, instead relying on a computer to do it for them. Of course, there are there are probably other more interesting reasons, such as companionship, uh, assistance, and if we truly stretch the concept of AI to biology, then cyborgs are cool, I guess. Could argue that there are several reasons for why people are obsessed with AI, but the end result is the same. The desire for AI advancement and creation, all for the sake of convenience.
We talked about how AI in concept came to be. Now let's get into the specifics of art made by AI. Now there are some people who think that AI art is a recent invention, but it is not. It is also clear that people have mixed thoughts on AI. So I asked some people for their opinions on AI slash AI art, which are as varied as you might think. And in a bit in the video, you, you will hear an interview between me and an artist. Now, the reality is the popularization of AI art started with the mainstream a semi-AI Dolly 2, which would allow you to enter a specific prompt to the AI to generate an image resembling the prompt by utilizing free libraries across the board and mashing them together to create an end result. This was how it sorted out, but what it ended up as is a slightly different version of that. And in reality, AI that can conjure images or create art based on prompts or some kind of technology, if you will, was originally created way back then in the beginning of the late 1960s at the University of California at San Diego. AI was created with the name of Aaron, developed by Harold Cohen, which could produce images in its primitive form. Aaron created simple black and white drawings. Cohen would later finish the drawings by painting them. So a version of using a concept of AI as a tool to assist in creating art. But since then, the concept of art AI has developed considerably, and there have been many examples of it, such as Google's 2015 Deep Dream, OpenAI's Dolly, Microsoft's Nuva Infinity, etc, etc. The, the list continues on. There's been a lot of them, like Midjourney being one of the most mainstream art AI at the moment. And all of it began decades ago with good intentions in mind, I think. But it's safe to say that the current state of these uh, so-called art AI and how they're utilized has caused a lot of discourse and problems for different communities specifically artists, but also positives for some. So I think it's worth taking a look at that all from a relatively neutral perspective and having a conversation. If you had Twitter, God bless your soul, but also, you may have seen during the past several months or years at this point, discourse concerning and surrounding AI art due to the ethical, moral implications and problems, respectively, caused by some AI algorithms and how some AI art functions. Because instead of using free stock libraries to create art, they utilize copyrighted libraries from other artists across social media and other platforms. Now, let's think what kind of AI there is. Perhaps you're thinking generally such as AI art, etc. But you, did you know that some form of AI is being utilized almost everywhere nowadays? In transportation, healthcare, banking, retail, entertainment, e-commerce? Whilst there are many uses for AI with varying degrees of controversy, AI-generated art in particular, as mentioned before, is quite questionable, and as such, it has got the internet in a storm. However, there is a far more evil utilization of AI art that I will get into soon. Now, I don't have to say that the reason why it's because of their art AI that is trained to steal from copyright libraries is bad, and I don't have to point out that from an inherent ethical and moral standpoint, it's akin to stealing and then drawing over the art a little bit, just with extra steps. So it's bad. On the other side, there are AI that utilize stock images in combination with your own reference pictures of yourself to create new images. Examples of such AI would be Lensa and, and the like. But now on the flip side, this has also caused concerns of artist jobs being stolen and taken away by the ease accessibility of AI art and ease of plagiarism. 
on the other side once more of the argument with AI such as chat GPT, which is not art AI, but instead intelligent AI based on the concept of learning with copious libraries of knowledge within it, making the job of programming, writing, etc. being made easier. As you can simply ask AI questions or ask it to program a very specific portion of a program with good enough prompts or even have it help you with your math homework along with explanations. This seems to be viewed somewhat favorably by specific communities at large. However, there are also examples of people having AI write an entire book and then simply selling it and attempting to then copyright it, which so far has not been successful and has also been looked down upon. There's quite a few videos on this. It is an interesting situation. Now to circle back to art AI again properly, some artists have started to use art AI to assist them in their art, such as making backgrounds with art AI, or assisting in line art, or more different ways. Now, as I'm not a professional artist, I do not, nor can I speak on if that's right or wrong, simply presenting that there is two sides to this entire discourse, and there is some benefit to be gained from art AI. A lot of experts and journalists have gone out of their way to write and discuss the benefits of potential problems with art AI. For example, in September 2020, an expert concluded that, quote unquote, AI art is everywhere right now, with even experts not knowing what it will mean. A news outlet established the AI generated art booms and reported about the issues of copyright and automation of professional artists being one of the main possibilities of controversies and problems in the future. I touched upon this quite a few times now when I was going over the discourse that has been happening, but here we will dwell a bit with deeper, a, a bit further into this hellhole from a technical and legal standpoint. Now, I'm no lawyer, nor am I an expert in the technical side of things in regards to AI or AI art, so I won't delve into the very nitty gritty of how it all works. I'll have one of my good friends do that later on. But instead, I'll go over the surface level and discuss potential problems in depth. From a legal standpoint, there have been a tremendous amount of legal battles recently and copyright questions and issues raised up in recent times with the appearance of AI written books, AI art creations utilizing stock images, AI created programs utilized by professional programmers, AI created poems, etc, etc. The, the question of whom holds the copyright, can you copyright AI creations? And is it morally and ethically correct to allow for AI created creations to be copyrighted? This has come up multiple times recently. So, so far courts have ruled against it, stating simply that for something to be copyrighted, it has to be created by a human. There are other fundamental problems caused by the sudden rise of AI art everywhere, namely creators getting flagged or hate mobbed due to people assuming a creation is AI art, whilst in reality it is not. Just in recent times, an artist got screwed over in a subreddit due to their art being believed to be AI generated, which turned out not to be true, and it was a huge story for like a week. Now, everyone moved on afterwards, but this kind of similar story has occurred multiple times now, so there is a level of paranoia in regards to if you can quote-unquote trust artists that their art is legitimate and not AI art. And of course for some AI generated art it's very easy to tell it's fake, such as really really weird body proportions or absolutely horrendous anatomy, such as uh, 9 fingers, 17 fingers or several extra limbs. But what if an artist creates a character like that. There is a lot of friendly fire going on in the art community due to these questions. The inaction and lack of support from massive art platforms 
has has not helped ease the tension nor anxiety either. A, a good example being Art Station, which completely allowed AI art and did nothing about it to a point where artists grouped together to essentially protest the site for several weeks, asking for action. Eventually, after several weeks, Art Station took some sort of action, if you can call it that. Essentially, their fix was to simply allow users to hide AI generated content and making it a specific genre within the website instead of it just spamming the art station main page. But in reality, it does not actually resolve anything. I, I don't think at least, but at the same time, I, I, I do think it's, it's not like they can inherently take a massive stand against AI generated art either due to the reluctance of most brands and companies not wanting to pick sides due to the fear of lawsuits or other types of action. So they always try to appease both sides, stay neutral. If you are interested in the more legal side of the conversation surrounding AI and copyright, I'd, I'd highly recommend the Legal Eagle video that recently came out as of me writing this. The problems with AI as of me writing the script have however escalated to quite tremendous levels. Right now there is a massive sag after a protest fighting for fair wages for actors and writers and fighting to keep AI out of the writing procedure which big companies are and have been trying to replace writers with. Utilized more and more by huge companies and there are fears from the actors and writers that their jobs will be replaced, which you're free to have your own opinion on the situation as it is occurring right now and it's probably gonna keep on going after I've, I have uploaded the video. But it, it is a bit of a questionable situation where some kind of conversation should be had. Moreover, just a few weeks ago, we had the first proper case of a lawyer attempting to use ChatGTP in court. It did not go well and quite a few sanctions were thrown around due to it. If you want to find out more, once again, Legal Legal made an amazing video on it. But enough of that. Here's the interview that I promised you. Okay, alright, so... Uh... I, I have a I have the most basic question ever. Uh, okay. What what do okay. you think about art AI as a, as a whole? It's a basic question, but I feel like my answer is a little bit more complex and nuanced, I guess, because the general idea of AI mixing with art, I feel like, is fine. Like, I don't think there's an issue with it. I think for especially a lot of probably most digital artists would be lying if they said they didn't use some kind of artificial technology to help them with their artwork. Um, and I think it can come with a lot of benefits. I think you can get pretty far with it. I think you can really elevate your art with it. Um, my mixed feelings, though, comes with the ethics of how the technology is built, how it might be used, those sorts of things. Um, but in a perfect world, I don't think that uh, it's that big of a, an issue for AI to coincide and coexist uh, with art, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Okay, that, that, that's, a, that's a fair neutral point, I think. But, but that kind of does build up on my next question. Uh, art AI, or like the very concept of it, has like... It's existed for a few decades now, yeah. the very original yeah. concept for what people consider art AI that artif artificially creates an image or whatnot has existed for decades. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as an artist and as someone involved in like uh, the internet and whatnot, what, what do you think makes this current utilization, this current uh, mainstream existence of art AI so negative mm -hmm. for a lot of people? Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I think it's sort of what I was, was touching on was the ethics part, because like I said, digital artists, animators, um, so many of them use AI and have used AIs, AI for years now. And I think with this new wave with, I forget the name of the first one, Dolly was one of the early ones that came out with this. Like every artist, when we saw it, had such a blast playing with it. Like we enjoyed it. We wanted to use it as a tool. 
Um, so we were very much welcoming to this technology from what I saw um, in my circle of the internet. Um, but the problem came up when we realized just what this technology was made from. And we, you know, once we learned that it was made from us, made from our work, made from, you know, just taking images, artworks, um, basically anything these people wanted for free from the internet and incorporating it into this technology, we started to realize. I mean, I could go into probably a long rant about the, the history of artists and how society doesn't, uh, this is my own kind of personal take on it, but I feel like artists aren't a super well-respected industry um, in pretty much any industry. Um, there's definitely people who appreciate art, but as a career, it's never been paid well. Um, it's never been really looked upon as valuable in a way. So I think that this also contributed to that feeling that so many artists have of growing up being disrespected and misunderstood and kind of talked down to in a lot of ways to people who don't understand art, who don't understand the process, the skill that it takes, that it's, that it's a real job. <laughs> Um, I think that contributed to it. So this is like another thing that artists are dealing with. It's like piling on top. So I don't think it was like a new thing for us to be upset about in a way. It was more just like another thing that we were hurt by. And I think that's probably where a lot of the pain comes from is like, oh, not only has our work been stolen, ripped apart, used against our will previously, but now it's more so put out there for so many more people to use and take advantage of. And uh, yeah, I think I think that's probably a, where a lot of the negativity comes from. That makes sense. Yeah, no, that, that's a very interesting uh, perspective. <laughs> I, I hadn't actually thought about that before, really. Not, not, not to that extent. But, but it, I, mm -hmm. I, it is definitely true that artists or like people mm -hmm. who create things in the whatever artistic medium they feel like, they really do seem to get the short end of the stick more often than not in almost every possible regard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously this is all my personal opinion, my just biased yeah. life experience. But, so but... overall, you don't think AI art as a concept is inherently negative, it's more to do with the moral and otherwise uh, questionable ethics in how it is being utilized uh, currently. Yeah. 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 Um, just I guess as an example, um, I've seen a lot of voice actors lately. I'm not in that field, I can't speak for them, but from what I've seen, um, voice actors are concerned not only for their jobs, but also what it means to have not only one's voice taken and being used and saying things that they're not consenting to, but anyone's voice could be taken. So there's been a rise now of like those uh, scammer phone calls where they get clips of your voice from somewhere and they call your grandparent or something and it sounds just like you. So that sort of stuff I think is concerning too. Um, with deep fakes as well, like that stuff concerns me. Um, so in terms of use, like that's kind of how I'm thinking. Um, but in terms of like where they get the information of to build this stuff, um, like stealing from other artists um, and, and pretty much anyone at this point, if you posted a photo on the internet of just even a selfie, like the odds are that that's been taken by now too. And um, so like where they get this stuff from, and just using it in ways that could be dangerous or uh, malicious in some way. Those are probably yeah, my I mean, big uh, concerns. Yeah, yeah, that actually reminds me that there is there has been a growing amount of uh, people using your voice and creating essentially deep fakes and using that to scam others. That is a very good point. The the, the use of AI has really kind of open the dark Pandora's box in many ways. I, hadn't really, yeah. I actually kind of forgot about the scam calls for a moment. Yeah. Uh, I actually, actually kind of forgot about that, but yeah, that, that's been a thing that's been happening. Bloody hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
But I think it's similar to, like, in a way, it also reminds me of, like, when cameras were first invented or when, like, digital programs and stuff were first invented. Like, there was a lot of pushback for that technology as well. Um, even when I was starting out art as, like, a kid and I was trying out, you know, Photoshop <laughs> and people were saying, oh, digital art's not real art because it still was new. And it's like, oh, it's cheating to do this or that. And that's a fairly common conversation you'll see from time to time in the art community, this or that's cheating. And so I think AI, AI uh, technology in this, in this manner is going to be seen in a similar light, even if it was built ethically, you would have uh, conversations like this pop up. But I would certainly rather it have been built ethically from the start than not. But I'm not opposed to the technology. I think it has a time and place kind of like you know, digital programs like Photoshop or uh, CSP, whatever you want, or, you know, cameras, photography, that sort of stuff. I think they have a time and place, and I think you can make art just fine with them. But yeah, a lot of it is just, you know, taking taking other people's work and then building off of that. Yeah, no, yeah. So so it's the, it's the problem of uh, where the art they are utilizes its library of content from more so than the existence thereof. It, it's, it's more to do that the library that uh, art they borrows from should be ethical, should be, well, not screwing over artists. And yeah. th that, that's the main concern that yeah. that it should be ethical and it should be moral. That, that, that's the main problem you have in art AI. Yeah. Yeah, that's most of what I've seen in the community is if there is a way to credit or give attribution in some way, there is a way to uh, pay artists um, some amounts of fees or something to compensate them just some sort of way if we're going to go this route um, to make it more beneficial and work with artists rather than just take advantage of what we've posted online yeah i mean yeah it, it is probably quite horrible to work uh, hours upon days upon maybe even weeks months on something posting it somewhere and then you have some kind of AI grab it and then use it in its vast library of images to create other images to appease whatever prompt is given to it. It, it is quite messy. Yeah. 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 But, but that, that this kind of <laughs> yeah. reminds me of like a slightly off topic question. Are, are you aware of the art station uh, drama or situation that's um, been unfolding? A bit of it, yeah. I don't use uh, ArtStation, but I, I knew that they think they were either working with uh, an AI developer, like Midjourney or one of them, or they were allowing it on the platform, something like that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no. It, it is uh, is an interesting time. Um, what what's, uh, You mentioned this before, but you, you brought up Photoshop. Um, mm -hmm. You use Photoshop as well, right? Mm -hmm. So... Do, do you use any kind of like uh, third-party programs or software or whatnot to enhance images or assist you in your uh, art creation process? Uh, third-party, no. I mostly just use either Photoshop or digital drawing, so whatever is already built into the program itself. Um, or I use... Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, what's yeah. What's it called? Later. The photo version. Yeah, uh, yeah, Lightroom. Lightroom. There we go. And like, those programs already have so many things built in that just auto do things for you. I don't know how like generous one's definition for AI would have to be, but there's definitely like things that I can do digitally that I could never do traditionally. I I do both digital and traditional artwork, so I I see both sides of at that spectrum at least. And there's definitely a lot of power in digital art programs nowadays. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like digital artists, a lot of them would be lying if they said they didn't use some kind of technology to assist them with their artworks. Like 3D models or uh, correction tools, yeah, I mean, what have you. My, my personal opinion is that if it's a tool to assist in the creation of something, I think it should be completely acceptable and normal because why would yeah. then you use something that just assists you? I mean, it doesn't yeah. do everything for you. It simply assists yeah. in the process. So I don't inherently yeah, see anything yeah. wrong with it. I mean, 
I'm a game exactly. developer, I'm also a 3D modeler, and I also use Photoshop, and I also mm. used quite a few tools mm. to assist me. I use Photoshop and I used a wide selection of all kinds of uh, possible filters and stuff that exist. I use all kinds of different enhancement tools that exist just to mm -hmm. make things better. So yeah, I, I, I do think mm -hmm. um, AI art viewed as a tool is a, is yeah. a fairly unbiased, yeah. honestly, very objectively, uh, 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 a fairly um, good take, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I agree. I think AI, you know, the technology itself, rather than its library, I think the idea, the concept of it, it could be huge for artists. And I think a lot of us, I mean, like I said at the start, like when Dolly first was getting popular, because I think that was like the first main one that a lot of people in my circle really saw. We were so in love with it. We were so into it. So I think it could have been a very welcomed new technology for artists had it not been soured by you know yeah the truth of how it was developed <laughs> but that 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 kind of reminds me of like um i i I've, I've been doing a lot of research for this video of course and so i've been i've been staring at the internet and twitter and other social media for quite some time and asking uh, people's opinions and stuff and i remember seeing this argument that was kind of for art ai that proposed a hypothetical that if you are a artist who is like really fluent and really uh, good at cra like drawing characters, drawing uh, humanoids or animals or whatnot, just, just drawing the character, the character, and but being bad at backgrounds, or the mm -hmm. AI or as in a concept could mm -hmm. be useful there because you can have that generate the background for you that you can then just blend in with the character that you have created creating like a complete picture with a lot more uh, a lot more to it than they would have been originally potentially but what's what's mm -hmm. your opinion on that mm -hmm. i mean i mean if i'm being frank i already do similar stuff to that as is <laughs> there are times where i just don't feel like drawing a background so i'll just find a royalty free image online and i'll use you know various tools and stuff in photoshop to you know, make it not so photo photorealistic and then maybe do some painting over it, help blend it in with the character. But like that sort of thing is already easily done, available, and so many artists already do it. Uh, photo bashing is another thing that professionals in the industry do all of the time. So all of this stuff is basically the same as what AI would bring to the table in regards to that. So. I don't personally have an issue with the idea yeah, of it. Th that's completely fair, I think. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add or bring up or say yourself? Um, um, uh, probably not much that I can think of. I appreciate you sort of... Uh, for, well, one, I appreciate you talking with me and uh, hearing out the voices of artists and having this conversation going. I think it's an important conversation to have and I hope that like people who listen to it can take the time to try to understand the artist's perspective of it and not just get lost in the idealiz idealization of the technology and be like, hey, you know, who who is uh, being affected by this and what are they saying? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think it is an important conversation to have. I, I do think that a lot of things in this world will only ever move forward or get resolved with people having a conversation. So. I am, I'm really thankful that you agreed to me essentially a kind of amateurs interviewing you. I, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, thank you a lot. Yeah, sure. And uh, yeah, uh, again, thank you a lot. <laughs> no problem. No problem. This now is where I discuss the true evil utilizations of AI. See, whilst AI art has become a massive point of controversy and discourse in recent time, the most controversial use of AI would be AI that performs billions, trillions of computations on human data to find psychological weak points 
See, this is often used in advertisements, marketing, and other reasons for data collection. For example, a lot of websites and companies use data gathering for their AI models for a variety of purposes, alongside the prior data reasons. Just recently, as of me writing this, Twitter just recently implemented a new part in their TOS, stating, we may use the information we collect and publicly available information to help train our machine learning or artificial intelligence models for the purposes outlined in this policy. The policy will be on the screen. And there is some fairly questionable, um, questionable uses for your data. Now, as some people have stated, this is not new as data gathering was made fundamentally mainstream by websites such as Facebook. Data gathering has always been used by companies for the purposes of selling it to third parties or utilizing it in fairly nefarious ways. But recently it's been escalated to a far more predatory degree where your data is being used to train AI models alongside everything else. So your data now is not really your own anymore. Now, hypothetically, I'll present a fairly dangerous thought. What if you combine AI with dark psychology properly? If you're not aware of what dark psychology is, then think battle passes, loot boxes, microtransactions, and prices that end with 99 cents. All of them utilize some form of dark psychology, but it could honestly have its own video as it is a very, very huge topic. However, for the purposes of this video, it does seem like AI is becoming more and more prevalent, not just in general consumer products and websites, but also being utilized more and more by companies at a wider scale. Companies such as Netflix and Disney, as mentioned before, are constantly trying to push for AI to be used in one way or another. Just recently, there was a Marvel release trailer that was created with the use of AI. There's also Netflix that is uh, apparently pushing to replace their writers with AI. So are we truly far away from a reality where AI is combined with already pre-existing predatory concepts within games and wider beyond to create the most optimal evil combination humanly possible to truly get the most possible profit by being as predatory as possible? Despite the controversy and problems, despite the moral implications and all of the ethical questions with AI and even pushback against AI in different specific industries, AI, unfortunately or fortunately, depends on who you ask, is still tremendously successful. Or at least what people are calling AI right now. For example, some statistics according to Statista revenue from the artificial intelligence software market worldwide is expected to reach uh, around $126 billion by 2025. So that is uh, a fairly depressing reality. As per Carter, 37% of organizations have implemented AI in some form. As I previously mentioned, a lot of companies are utilizing AI in one form or another. The percentage of enterprises employing AI has grown 270% over the past four years, and it is, it, it is expected to continue growing. Now, according to Servion Global Solutions, by 2025, 95% of customer interactions will be powered by AI. A recent, well, fairly recent 2020 report from Statista reveals that the global AI software market is expected to grow approximately 54% year on year and is expected to reach a forecast size of about 22.8 billion. So despite all of the issues with AI, in regards to AI being a business or part of business, it's very lucrative and successful, which is why more and more companies and industries are implementing some form of AI. Another recent case of this will be Roblox, that is furthering and implementing AI to system programming and creation of games. And I'm convinced before I finish writing the script, or in a not too distant future, 
there will be more examples of AI being incorporated everywhere, every facet of your life, every single interaction you have will at some point have had some kind of AI involvement or will be predominantly AI. But will it replace humans anytime soon? I, I kind of doubt it. Now this is where I will have my good friend uh, Luke introduce himself and explain and discuss how AI slash art AI functions in a fundamental way in regards to algorithms and functionality. It's bound to be an interesting uh, listen. Hello, my name is Zeki. I'm a computer science graduate and a long-standing friend of Mongols. Now, since the dawn of computers, programmers have learned how to tell computers what to do. The sign of a good programmer has always been someone who could convert complex ideas into instructions for a computer to follow, and the sign of a truly great programmer was someone who could do so elegantly. And this still holds true today. The bulk of programming still requires a precise conversion of abstract idea into concrete instruction. AI, however, is increasingly emergent in the field of programming as a new way of coding. Instead of providing instructions on how to perform a task, AI programming focuses on teaching a computer what its task is. And from there, the AI learns the various consequences of its actions, hopefully, eventually discovering complex sequences of actions to complete the task at hand. To understand the foundation of how an AI works, all you need to do is metacognize. That is, you need to think about the way that you think. When you learn how to solve a new type of problem, play a new game, or some other skill, you must first understand what you're trying to do. In chess, for example, the goal is simple, you've got to win the game. But with a more abstract skill like artistic creativity, the goal is less simple. For a human, the nature of the goal can be complicated. It can be to improve the mechanical skill, create an expressive reflection of your emotional state, a combination of the two or something else entirely. Whilst the true complexity of modern AI is difficult to encapsulate, the fundamental principles are not. The AI must first understand the rules and the goals of its purpose. For an artistic AI, the goal is to convert a sequence of prompts into an image using specified modifiers. The prompts are usually a description of an image, for example, floating tower atop clouds, and the modifiers are typically styles of art, for example, photorealistic or fantasy. How these complex goals are understood by an AI is a complicated topic that I won't delve into today. After all, I'm not here to teach a fully-fledged course on computer science. Instead, we'll use a more simple example to showcase how an AI could think. Let's try and teach an AI to play noughts and crosses. Due to the simplicity of the game, it's quite easy to define the AI's goal. It's to win by getting three adjacent squares to contain the correct symbol. If the AI starts, it can only select from a sequence of nine possible moves. There are, after all, only nine valid moves to the starts of a game of noughts and crosses. When it makes its moves, something else, for example a human or another AI, makes an opposing move. Our AI will then continuously make moves until no more moves are possible. Our AI probably lost its first game. After all, it had no way to know what moves were better than others when it was selecting one. However, now it knows what moves caused it to lose the game, so it's less likely to try and make those moves in the future. If the AI's enemy is also stupid, for example another stupid AI, a poorly coded algorithm, or a stupid person, the AI is likely to eventually stumble into a win. The moment the AI finally wins, the model will go into overdrive, reinforcing that these previously made decisions were good decisions. Unfortunately for our AI, it probably doesn't understand the context of its victory. This means even against a new opponent, the AI will eventually try and do the same sequence of moves again, which will cause it to lose. Eventually, our AI will begin trying new things, until eventually it stumbles into another win, and another, and another, and another. Over many wins, the AI will develop more context as to why it's winning, and that's where the true power of the AI begins to showcase itself. As the AI builds its understanding of context, it learns its own strategies. In a simple game like Noughts and Crosses, this doesn't really mean much. After all, even the be world's best Noughts and Crosses players like myself can only hope to draw against other skilled opponents. However, in a more complicated, mathematically open game, the terrifying strength of AI is revealed. As an AI wins over and over, or perhaps just loses less crushingly in its games, it is observing mathematical patterns of complexity far beyond the scope of what a human can conceptualize. You can never hope to manually spot patterns across millions, billions, or even trillions of games of chess, crunch those patterns into possible ideas, try the ideas, see how they all performed, 
and then iterate your understanding based on your conclusions. That's because you're not an AI. For an AI backed with sufficient computational resources, not only is this possible, but it's child's play. When you play against an AI in chess, you're fighting a mathematical titan. It's analyzed trillions of board states, peered dozens of moves deep into calculations, and it's derived the strategy from calculating patterns across every game of chess ever played. Huge thanks to uh, Luke and Sam for agreeing to participate in this video. I'm very grateful for it. Massive thanks. Uh, links to their respective things will be in the description. Now, it's hard to summarize my thoughts. I I find it hard to be against AI in 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 concept, but I also find it extremely difficult to be in complete support of it either due to the moral and ethical implications of a lot of ways AI is being utilized. I do think AI can have a positive impact and be useful as a tool in someone's arsenal, but it can also be equally as negative as we have seen. I know that's a pretty cop-out opinion, I know someone's gonna say I'm fence-sitting, but it's not inherently a special take either, I know. But I don't think it has to be. I think there should be an open dialogue and discussion on everyone's part. At least in a perfect world, I do think AI can be used to enhance, improve, and increase proficiency and efficiency. And also assist not only programmers, but also artists. But at the same time, my heart goes out to the artists that have been screwed over by people abusing AI and all of the others affected by it as well. Or even musicians that have been screwed over by AI creating music, or some YouTubers that have had their entire content copied by AI and then re-uploaded. I think there is definitely a conversation that should be had, and I definitely think that a government should potentially get slightly involved. I'm never one to ask for government to start regulating things, but we might need some updates for some rules and some regulations to deal with the changing time, so to speak. Now, before we end, once again, massive thanks to Luke for popping in and a few other people that have looked over my first draft script to make sure I did not mess up somewhere and or miss something, which probably I still did somewhere. Oh well. Uh, massive thanks everyone. Uh, massive thanks to my Patreons. Uh, if you want to subscribe to my Patreon, that is also going to be in the description. I'm not really that good at plugging my Patreon. And with that all being said and done, uh, see you all next time in an unknown amount of time. Probably next century. <laughs> <laughs>